Okay, so I've been working on various um, programming methods with this Arduino, um, and I was using the Arduino IDE, which is all text base based, and you have to get the colons and the commas and all that stuff in the right places. And to be fair, although I got some menu systems working on this uh, on this LCD screen here, um, which I did a previous video for, uh, to then extract that data and manipulate it in order to make the uh, the stepper motor turn the chuck exactly how I wanted it was starting to peck my head a little bit so I looked around and I found some uh, some other software some pictorial based software called um, XOD and basically it's like a flow chart and it's really easy to manipulate and once I got over an initial uploading issue um, it took, took me about half an hour to sort that out this morning I'm able to come up with a a program which um, which actually works and does what you expect it to and uh, we can get into polishing that off so we've got um, a breadboard here with um, incrementing and decrementing buttons here so basically to up and down the RPM um, and then we've got a start button and a stop button um, and this is how far I've got with the implementation of it the stepper motor is all connected through um, as well and I'll do a I'll do a video to um, show the screen of how the logic works on on screen uh, afterwards. So to see how it works, so it's obvious here you've got your 60 RPM and then you've got 0 degrees. And obviously 60 RPM refers to how fast the chuck is going to turn and degrees refers to how many degrees over 360 it's going to turn if you want an overlap on your uh, weld. So we can up the RPM here, if we stick to 60 and then run a start, it turns 360 and it does it every single time. And of course you can, you can lower that as to your want. And just for the example I've made the increments um, units of 10, just to sh so we can see an obvious difference on this, uh, on this video. So if we up that to uh, something like 90, so it does a nice turn, let's just take that down back to 60. So 60 RPM, one revolution per second, it's quite a manageable thing to see. So if we now, you can decrement to less, um, and these, these numbers which I've just added in the bottom there for debugging, um, that's the, the step, so each rotation of the stepper motor is 1600. Um, we won't go into negative numbers, um, so you can see the degrees are now the uh, 1600. So if we go with something obvious like 90, when we run it now, it goes 90 degrees over. So each time it adds another 90 degrees. So if we up it to 180, oh you can't up it to 180, why can't you do that? That's strange, I must have hit the wrong button. It goes all the way back to the top, or back to the bottom. It's pretty cool, no? So what I'm thinking I'm going to add is um, where you've got 60 RPM. RPM is a, a generally accepted term, um, but I think it would be more intuitive to know how many seconds per rotation that might be better. So um, we can add that next to it, and so it would adjust both values at the same time. So you could, you know, pick it up from that. And the degrees overlap. We could we could run that too, um, and then of course we're going to want an output to turn the welder on at a certain point things to add to it acceleration we could start slow um, and then carry on you know we can add that quite easily but it's quite a good little system so I wanted to go through this program which I've come across it's called Zod XOD.io it's free to download um, I spent a long time uh, working with menu systems trying to get the uh, 
the LCD to do what I wanted and I got it to do what I wanted and then to extract the data from that so the RPM and the degrees uh, it, it, was a, it was a real headache I found that I was spending all of my time trying to figure out how to get the program to do the most simplest of things and adjust it that I started to look for a pictorial programming method now most free programs which you can download end up being um, quite poor you know quite low expectations of it but I, I did a bit of research and I downloaded this one um, and it did take a little while to get it to uh, upload to uh, the Arduino uh, but it, it, it's seamless now it's doing everything I need it to do um, and within you know just just a couple of hours of getting used to it um, I was able to upload programs and it's quite a familiar environment with you know if you if you're used to using OR gates and gates um, and converting from one fo number format to another it works really really easily so to look at this particular program um, which is what I've got at the moment you know I'm, I'm in the process of tweaking it and adding and changing different pieces bits and pieces it's kind of compulsive to do that to be honest I wonder if I can do this I wonder if I can do that anyway this is my 20 by 4 LCD module um, you, you, you can you can insert the address there um, the backlight there well the backlight isn't even connected to the Arduino so that's irrelevant but um, this text string input is what's going to come up on line one then you've got line two there's something I'm just working on there I'll just show the word running if there's nothing connected to it um, so if you delete that you can put the word walking just you know for example um, and that's what's just going to come up regardless so you could put a header on there if, if you uh, if you want to um, working working down from the from the button presses uh, you've got rpm add and rpm take away um, we start with a value of 10 sorry we don't start with a value of 10 we start with a value of 60 10 are the increments with which it goes up and down by so you could change that to one or half or you know 100 if you wanted to so we're, we're working with um, rpm as a recognizable speed of rotation revolutions per minute makes sense to me so we start with our you know start value which is an intuitive number I think you know 60 rpm that's going to rotate for one second it's great for debugging and something you know easy to see we then add to that with this increment module or this count module so that will add 10 to the number so then 60 becomes 70 um, then to that number if we press the uh, subtract button so rpm negative it steps uh, by an increment of 10 and it will subtract that from the number we then can take this number to two places we take it to the um, number formatter so that just takes off two decimal points we don't need those and then it creates this string here um, so on the first line of the display it will say the rpm which is currently set then a space then the letters rpm and then that goes into line one and then you can see how um, it follows up for the uh, degrees as well in exactly the same way this number um, we, need, we need to now take that rpm and make it something which the uh, the stepper motor is going to understand and the stepper motor understands uh, that it needs to do 1600 steps in order to do 360 degrees so and it also needs a pulses per second so pulses step same thing right so first of all we divide uh, rpm by 60 to get the uh, revolutions per second and then we multiply that by our step value so we've initialized that as 1600 um, we do that rather than putting that in there we could put that in there if we didn't have a link we could put the 1600 in there but I want to use that one um, number for, for several different things so I only want to have to change it once if I change the number of steps the step motor takes um, so it then uh, multiplies the uh, revolutions per second by the number of steps and then that's the speed set um, the degrees here the degrees is an overlap so um, it, it does a bunch of maths here which I'm not gonna go into um, it's fairly self-explanatory so we then have a start button so uh, that's on digital port 12 um, it's 
always looking for that. So um, up, up here we could do a lockout. So um, if you know you could start um, a lockout so that these pins will only be looked at whilst it's not running. Uh, that's something that you could do. I haven't done that yet. Um, just avoid pressing those buttons whilst it's running at the moment, really, isn't it? But it's something which, you know, good programming would make you do. So start, it then triggers the stepper to do what it's required to do with these uh, numbers here. So it will go at that speed for that amount of steps. When it's done, it resets this flip-flop. So the start button also sets, sets the flip-flop, so it will make that pin go high which just basically is the boolean output which will be true so if it's running it will say true and then when the stepper is done it will reset the flip-flop and it'll make that go to false and um, I'm, I'm kind of working on making that say something like a word and that but you know I've been on this for just a few hours so the correct method of doing that I haven't quite gotten to that yet but I did want to explain it <laughs> 